Welcome to Science in Your Shopping Cart, a new series that shows how science touches many of the products you buy at the grocery store. From new varieties of fruits and vegetables, to technological advances that make your food safer, cheaper, and tastier. I'm Todd Silver. Berries are some of the healthiest and tastiest foods that you could eat. Many types of berries provide health benefits in addition to their sweet flavor, including being high in antioxidants, improve blood sugar, are high in fiber, can help fight inflammation, and could even help reduce the risk of cancer. Here at USDA, researchers have been improving berries and creating new types of berries for over 100 years. And we're still working on berries that are more disease resistant, last longer in your fridge, and are sweeter and healthier. In fact, later on in this episode, we'll be unveiling a brand new strawberry. So move that shopping cart over to the berry section. You'll be very happy you did. Blueberries are a nutritional powerhouse that taste great, whether eating fresh, adding to a smoothie, or enhancing your favorite food. Blueberry pancakes, anyone? The blueberry is named for its velvety, deep blue color and is one of the few fruits that's native to North America. Up until the early 1900s, blueberries were picked from the wild and the bushes often did not survive when transplanted. True domestication was realized in 1910 when USDA botanist Frederick Coville discovered that blueberry bushes require moist, acidic soil to thrive. In 1916, the first commercially cultivated crop of high bush blueberries was harvested. Most of the blueberry varieties that we enjoy today can be traced back to a USDA breeding program. In fact, ARS is credited for establishing the entire blueberry growing industry in the southeastern United States. That's kind of a, a fun story. We originally started out in tong research and throughout the 60s, we, we did tongue research. Well, if you know any history of the Gulf Coast, in August of 1969, Camille hit. And the tongue industry was already struggling. And then when Camille hit, it just kind of wiped out what was left of the tongue research. That's Donna Shaw, longtime horticulturist with ARS's Thad Cochran Southern Horticultural Research Laboratory in Poplarville, Mississippi, which is a lot harder to say than you think. Farmers use the tongue tree for a variety of purposes, including pressing its seeds into an oil, which could be used as a waterproofing coating for furniture and boats. Donna explained that after Hurricane Camille wiped out the tongue industry down south, many farmers were unsure what to plant next. Era scientists who spent their entire careers on tongue research now needed to pivot to a new crop. The station was left with Dr. Spears and one secretary and a and a technician, and that was it. He did some forage work. He did some work with CANAF. He did some other little things like that. And this is his story because I worked for him for so long. He said, they finally told me, just decide on something and do it. And so he had been working with a collaborator from Beltsville on blueberries. He came down and he was like, golly, these blueberries grow wild all in the woods. They've got to grow here. And so from that, they just kind of started on this totally unknown crop down here of blueberries. And so in about, let's see, in the 71, they planted their first research crop. And then in 1975, we became officially the small fruit research station focusing on blueberries. And it just blossomed from there. I mean, the whole blueberry industry down here is is a direct result because of the research that we've done on blueberries. The Small Fruit Research Station has produced many blueberry cultivars like Gumbo, Biloxi, Gupton, and varieties of Rabbit Eye, which is native to the southeastern U.S. Biloxi is one of the few blueberries that's available from November to March. So if you're eating blueberries in the winter, chances are it's Biloxi. Today, researchers are looking at ways to shorten the production season and get blueberries to the marketplace faster. Geneticists like Dr. Abraham Babaker are breeding early season varieties that tolerate the late season frost, 
like gumbo. These varieties offer expanded production windows with better tolerance to environmental stresses and resistance to common diseases. In order for the grower to uh, make money, they have to get to the market early, like May. So gumbo has the fruit quality trait from the high bush. At the same time, it has adaptation trait from the rabidae and native species. Also, it's early. It produces the fruit sizes. Is big, so that's one of the trade that also the consumer like interested in. Dr. Babaker and his colleagues are also looking to drastically reduce the decade or longer time that it takes to develop new blueberry varieties. They're moving from phenotypic selection methods to selection based on DNA sequencing, using data from previous breeding projects to develop DNA markers for ideal cultivar desirable traits and they're employing new technologies to test thousands of samples at a rapid pace. We are trying to move from phenotypic selection based on just observation out in the field to selection based on the DNA sequence. Also, we start to move to high throughput phenotyping, which will help us to process large number of samples and screen for sugar content, fructose, glucose, sucrose. And we could do all, all of that process like 1,000 or 2,000 samples in two weeks. So if we combine that with marker assistive technology, I'm expecting like in the future we could move like to seven to 10 years to the new cultivar. With new cultivars comes the challenge of getting growers to plant the new crops. Dr. Babaker hosts field days to educate farmers on the latest blueberry varieties. There, they can visually inspect and taste the blueberries, learn about their growing patterns, and realize other benefits such as pest and disease tolerance. I think also you need to convince the grower that, you know, what you develop is better than what they have. I think the biggest challenge with the blueberry mar is the marketing of it. Not only are they big and beautiful, but their flavor matters. I think what I always love is the interaction with growers and the people, the education on, you know, just teaching them how good blueberries are and how good they are for you. They are so good for our body. It is just remarkable what all they do for us.